I totally agree that officers can be trained to recognize and be sensitized to who they're dealing with, but they have to have a prime directive of keeping everyone safe. And I, I think that makes sense to recognize what you're dealing with, but if there's a protocol pushed on officers that takes the place of threat suppression, and if we get so involved with the deterrent that they're in there trying to be a counselor instead of protect public safety, then now we've gone too far. And I, I don't understand where the line is drawn if we've got officers trying to be psychologists first instead of deterrence. What is the objective? What is the protocol? The objective is to keep everyone safe. You know, one of our core values is reverence for human life. And that's the officer's life, the community's life, and that subject that we're dealing with. We have to have empathy and compassion. And part of that mental health intervention training also comes with tactical training, crowd management training. And it's not either or, it has to be together. And our officers are trained first, safety. If there's a knife or a gun, we're going hands-on and placing handcuffs on that individual to keep everyone safe. So the mental health training coupled with tactics and reverence for human life has to be at the forefront of this conversation. Yeah, and that's all I'm saying. Alana here's been shot in the face by someone. She wants lots of police uh, around as a deterrent. And that's what I'm saying is safety has to come first. Empathy is part of it. And I, clearly, this is what I do. I mean, I'm about protecting the mentally ill from themselves and from others. But you, public safety has to be first. No mental health counseling, no any intervention would have stopped you being shot in the head because of violent crime. Proactive policing, only thing that would have saved this woman's life. Police officer driving slow through the neighborhood, seeing a suspect, jumping out, talking to him, consensual encounter. Consensual encounters, we call them felony stops. Why is that? Because most consensual encounters, when done by an experienced street police officer, will result in an arrest. The second oversight comes down, Everybody starts watching every little thing you do. You know what cops do? They go reactive, not proactive. When's the last time you went on a midnight patrol in the projects, jumped out, did consensual encounters with gang members, drug dealers, people that are armed, that will only hate you because you don't live in the neighborhood. And if you choose to get out of the car, your life is in real danger. All the mumbo jumbo stops, it means nothing. We need more support. It means nothing. Your life's on the line at that moment. So can I respond? Please. Please, sir. So, you know, I've never uh, had to draw a weapon, but I've been working in this space for 20 years. I've been working on the violence issue as a public city, uh, as a public school, high school teacher in a very difficult neighborhood in Washington, D.C. I've been a prosecutor where I've put multiple murderers away. I've worked in the Obama administration. I've worked for Governor Cuomo. Uh, and I've been in academia. Uh, I've been to hundreds of community meetings, and I've actually sat down with actual shooters and street cops. So, I completely understand you got to get out of the ivory tower, and I understand you got to get your hands dirty. But that's not an excuse for an all or nothing approach when this issue is actually a little bit more complicated. We don't want to send the message that the only way to reduce crime is for every officer to feel completely free to go hands on whenever they want in, a in every situation. There's a balance here. There's been some recent studies that when officers slow down these encounters. Do you have a story or a question for me? Click the link in the description and tell me what in the world is going on.